Greetings adventurers, this is DM Kurt, and it hasn't been 72 hours yet since Wizards of the Coast, using D&D &D Direct, have announced that they're uh, bringing back Spelljammer, and towards the end of their 20-30 uh, minute uh, commercial, muttered a little something about Dragonlance coming back too. And we already have problems. So, I was excited, or at least heavily interested, in them bringing back Spelljammer. So Spelljammer is a setting unto itself where you can kind of do anything sci-fi based and also mix it with magic and have your old D&D and space thing going on. And it's also a good way to hand wave uh, transportation between one D&D world and another. If uh, I'm finishing up a Kryn campaign and uh, my co-DM wants to... Uh, run something in Greyhawk, we can just say, okay, well, uh, a Spelljammer ship shows up, and you guys hop aboard, and off you go to uh, Greyhawk. Cool. Boom, boom. That was kind of handy, j just in itself there. Instead of having to use ultra-high-level magic and go through portals and stuff, that's just another way to do it. Uh, the whole D&D in space thing, you can use naval themes, sci-fi themes, uh, really grab some other genres and mix it up. But they also mentioned Dragonlance. Now, Dragonlance was a setting I've uh, I've played through a couple of campaigns of that through and had a good time doing it. But uh, right away, Jeff Grubb and uh, Margaret Weiss came out and said that neither they nor Tracy Hickman were even informed that these things were coming out. Now, these three people are the original writers of those settings. And Watsy completely dropped the ball and didn't even bother talking to the writers of the original settings. Now, I realize that since Wizards, a division of Hasbro, owns the IP, they have the right to just do whatever they want with it. That's fine, but it doesn't mean it's a good idea. So... You could look at it through the lens of respect, uh, tradition. You know, if you're going to do a rewrite of the original source material, it kind of makes, it would kind of be nice to, you know, have at least a nod to these people and hopefully their names will be mentioned in the new books. I kind of doubt it. But it seems like dropping these folks a line, hey, uh, you know, we're doing a, a thing based on your old thing, uh, just a little little how to do thank you for what you did and hopefully this uh turns out to be real good the way we do it okay you could have it would have been respectful but it also doesn't make sense to not bring in these people as consultants so if you're going to do these new settings books based on the old stuff there's nobody that knows the material backwards and forwards and upside down more than the original writers so if you want to do a quality job, you would have, you would want to have some experts on hand who can say, uh, yeah, this doesn't, you know, this doesn't work like that. And that doesn't, you know, you guys, this character over here never actually talks to that character over there. And it, it just doesn't work that way. And we actually have completely contradicting rules here in place for how things work, you know. The, the fans are going to notice this sort of thing. And I just think they totally went about it the wrong way. Um, if you're looking for Spelljammer or Planescape or uh, Dragonlance to be the kinds, of, the kinds of campaigns that you enjoyed, they're bringing, back, they're bringing it back in name only, I think. Um, I hope to be proven wrong, but the fact that they're not even talking to the original writers, that's not a good sign. I was looking forward to it, and now I'm much more hesitant. But let's face it, uh, the corporation is there with one goal in mind, and that is to milk as much money out of the IP that they bought as they can. And if that's just churning out books with the name slapped across the front, you know, fire and forget. Uh, most of their other 5e books 
have been advertised for maybe two days at most and hey this is coming out it's gonna be cool and then they just totally forget about it and eventually it shows up on your shelves so we'll see if they put any effort into this or not but if you think that the corporation has people that even play the game I'm I'm doubting it I think maybe only 10% of the people at Wizards actually play D&D and of those 10% five to ten percent of that ten percent maybe have played any edition prior to fifth uh i don't think they're gamers and i don't think they really give a damn about the game i think they're just churning out product for a buck which they're legally entitled to do but i would recommend just not getting too excited about it till you actually see it in print uh the new spell jammer stuff from what i'm reading online we're looking at 64 pages times three booklets each. That's thin. That's real thin. Um, and hopefully they actually get something out there other than just that. But we'll see. DM Kurt, out.